uh, thing is glaucoma. This is known as the silent thief of sight. You can read that in Hindi. But this is somewhat of a difficult problem because patients lose their sight, their vision, very, very slowly. And they are not even aware that it's happening until it's too late. And this is not an uncommon problem I see among patients, especially um, patients coming from India. Uh, I see parents, for example, who, who moved from India to the United States and we find out they have glaucoma, which was never discovered while they were back home. Because the process happens so slowly and they don't go for an eye checkup regularly like they should, so it, it doesn't get picked up. So what is glaucoma? Let's go to the next slide. So glaucoma damages the optic nerve. This is the nerve in the back of the eye which takes the signals from the macula to the brain. This nerve gets damaged in glaucoma. This is what the nerve looks like when we look into the patient's eyes, a person's eyes in the back. So glaucoma is what we call a collection of disease. There are many reasons why patients get glaucoma, but one thing that happens is that their eye pressure goes up. Now, as this nerve gets damaged, the patients start losing sight vision. Now, this loss of sight vision happens so slowly and gradually that patient is not aware that is happening and because they're quite happy they can see what's exactly in front of them and a lot of these patients don't drive they don't do anything else where they require sight vision they're just not aware this can happen in one eye or both eyes at the same time until it's too late and this is an irreversible damage we cannot turn it back so let's go to the next slide okay so I mentioned glaucoma that the pressure in the eyeball goes up. 70% of the people, the pressure in the eyeball increases. So what is the normal pressure in the eye? It's a bell-shaped distribution with a little long tail, anywhere between 10 to 20. We consider 20, 21 um, millimeters of mercury as upper normal limit for normal uh, population. Now, that's about 95% of the people. but there are other patients who may have a little lower pressure or higher, but those are outliers. So that's 70% of the patients, the pressure will be high, but in 30%, the pressure may be normal, and yet they have glaucoma. So for hundreds of years, we thought this was increased pressure in the eye that was damaging the nerve. That is only a partial truth. The other 30% where the pressure is normal or sometimes even low, why does the nerve get damaged? We don't quite understand that yet. We think the blood circulation around this part of the nerve, something is wrong with that. Or maybe there is some metabolic issue we haven't quite figured out yet. Now, treatment for glaucoma is reduce the pressure. It seems to protect the eyes from further damage. Even the people whose pressure is normal, if you can reduce it by a few points, it protects the nerve. So the treatment is reduce the pressure. Now, in order to understand this, um, the, before I show you the next slide, I'm going to show you how the pressure builds up inside the eye. So there is a watery substance called aqueous humor inside the eye. It just circulates inside the eye. It doesn't come out. It's not the same as tears we see in front of the eye. This aqueous humor is synthesized in this part of the eye here called ciliary body. Then it circulates around the pupil and it exits through this little area called trabeculum. So there are drugs available. There are uh, laser procedures available. There are surgical procedures available to deal with either reduce the production or increase the outflow of that aqueous humor to control the pressure. So let's go to the next slide. <clears throat> oh, just a few statistics about glaucoma, 65 million people worldwide, 3 million people in the US. The problem in US, and this is a problem that exists everywhere, there are another 3 million people who have glaucoma yet they are not aware of it because they didn't get their eyes checked, nobody has looked at them um, carefully. 
quite a bit more common among African Americans. Now, there are some other risk factors such as age, so older the patient, higher the incidence of glaucoma, uh, race, family history. If there is one member in the family has glaucoma, chances are another member might get glaucoma. We are very careful about screening for that. Medical conditions such as diabetes, high blood pressure, eye injury, if you're nearsighted, if you're on some medications such as steroid, all these increase your risk for glaucoma. And there is some genes that also increase your risk. Okay, next slide. So what does glaucoma do? I mentioned earlier, it takes away your sight vision. Just to emphasize that point, you look at this sequence of pictures here. At the top is completely normal eye, looking at that scene. This is his second frame is a picture of a patient, what he sees with very early glaucoma. He can still see what's in front of him, but he's starting to lose sight vision. This is patient with fairly advanced glaucoma. The vision becomes a tunnel vision can't see anything on the side eventually leads to blindness. <clears throat> As it progresses through that, several activities of daily life get affected, starting with reading, simple tasks such as shopping, mobility, just walking around or even driving. All important activities of life slowly get affected. It happens very gradually. The patient is just not aware of this. Okay, next, go <coughs> next slide. <coughs> So, how do we diagnose glaucoma? It's very, very critical for an experienced eye doctor to look into your eyes to diagnose glaucoma. And that's what gets missed. Here, and then we do several other tests. I mentioned the eye pressure goes up. So we, how do we check eye pressure? Here, for example, we are checking the eye pressure of this patient. Uh, we look into the eye, Here, that's what this shows, and this is what we're looking for. This is the nerve in the back of the eye we are looking for. This is normal. This is a patient with glaucoma where we are seeing the damage. It, it's, this white circle gets bigger and bigger. Uh, we take some other measurements, the thickness of the front part of the eye. We look at that angle where the aqueous humor inside the eye uh, gets out of the eye. Then there are additional tests. These tests tell us how much damage has happened to that nerve. This is what is known as a field analyzer, which tests how much of the side vision has been lost. So this is how we come to a conclusion, patient has glaucoma. So what do we do? Next slide. <clears throat> so I mentioned earlier, you control the pressure. Treatment for glaucoma is lower the eye pressure by any means you can. So we start with the eye drop. So I mentioned earlier, the production happens here, the outflow happens here. If we can control these two factors, we can control the pressure. So usually we start with drops and there are drops that can do one or both of these, either decrease the production or increase the outflow. We try to balance this. There are at least eight, 10 different types of drops. Some patients do well with one drop, one drop a day, every night. Some patients require three, four, five drops a day uh, to control this. If that doesn't work, we do laser. We actually, laser is given to this part of the eye to increase the outflow. And if that doesn't work, there is surgery. And I'll show you next picture what the surgery involves. Okay, so eye drops. There are a variety of these eye drops which can decrease production or increase the outflow of the aqueous humor. And a lot of patients do well. <clears throat> next slide. <clears throat> Now I mentioned uh, surgical procedures to improve the outflow and there are various types of surgical procedures. Here is an example of a valve that's placed on the outside of the eyeball with a plastic tubing extending into the eye and this, there is a valve in here that controls how much of that aqueous flow uh, gets out through this valve. On the other hand, we can improve the outflow inside the eye by placing these stents. There are various types of stents that can be placed surgically inside the eye <coughs> to the outflow. And actually, we are doing more and more of this procedure when we do a cataract surgery in a patient. A lot of patients with cataract have also glaucoma or glaucoma patients have cataract. 
they need cataract surgery. When we do the cataract surgery at the same time, we implant these stents inside the eye to control their eye pressure. One problem with eye drops is patients get tired of putting their uh, drops in their eyes. Sometimes they forget, um, it might be expensive for the patients to buy, um, and so they don't work very well. So these type of stents are helpful, because then they don't have to use the drops after that. Okay, 